Welcome back. A vast majority of our 911 calls are as a result of people calling us out for the signs and symptoms they suffer from having cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, diabetes, and hypertension. Now, as firefighters, we feel it's our duty to reach out to our community and talk about how you can improve your nutrition and become more active. Now, joining me is Scott Crawford. Scott, good to see you. Hi, Forrest. Thanks for having me. Scott, tell us why you are in a position to be able to talk about how our community can work towards a better lifestyle. Well, Forrest, besides being a firefighter engineer for the Mesa Fire Department and being attached to the hazardous materials and technical rescue team, I'm also an American College of Sports Medicine certified health and fitness instructor. So over the course of my career, I've also helped a lot of firefighters with their health, fitness, and weight management issues. All right, so Sky, we're here at Bash's today. So what you're saying is that we could take small changes in how we eat to improve our quality of life? Absolutely, there's a lot of things that we can do to live a healthier lifestyle, and we make choices every day. So what better place to start talking about some of those choices than a place where we're gonna make a lot of choices, and that's at the grocery store. Okay, so I notice here we're in the outside of the store. Now, one of the things that we always hear about is the greater foods are on the outside of the store. Some of the ones you may wanna stay away from are in the center part of the store. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Most grocery stores are set up pretty much the same way where the healthier foods are gonna be around the perimeter. So if we can shop the perimeter, buy the greatest majority of our foods from that perimeter area, we're typically gonna be going in the right direction as far as getting the most nutrition from our shopping dollars. Staying away from the middle where there's a lot of processed foods, foods that are high in fat, salt, sugar, that's always a good idea. I know, Scott, it's not just the idea of staying away from junk food and then also eating healthier foods like fruits and vegetables. But once we eat healthy foods, what can we uh, be concerned about next? Well, you're right. We definitely wanna stay away from junk foods. We wanna increase our consumption of fruits and vegetables, but really, we're not telling anybody anything that they don't already know. That's a message that's been put out there for years and years and years. So we really wanna talk about today about dialing that down to some better choices when we talk about those fruits and vegetables. And so I'd like to start talking about kind of the controversy or the confusion associated with organically grown foods versus conventionally grown foods. And so when we talk about organically grown foods, a lot of people push back because they think they're more expensive or maybe they're not gonna you know, give us the value that we're getting from them. And they've been eating conventionally grown foods for their entire life. And quite frankly, there's not really a lot wrong with conventionally grown foods, but certainly there are instances where when they're available and the cost isn't prohibitive, we should choose organically grown foods. Something that you could use to help guide your decisions is the 2011 Shopper's Guide to Pesticides. Coincidentally, the newest version just came out. You can download it off of foodnews.org and it's just a little handy pocket guide to help you make those choices. And if you look at that guide, you'll see that apples and celery are at the top of the list. So these are foods that are highest in pesticide residue. Conversely, you'll see that on that same list, on the clean side, are things like onions, pineapple. So these are foods that we really don't need to be concerned about buying conventionally because they're not gonna have a lot of pesticides, apples, celery, other things that are on the, what they call the dirty dozen side. Those are things that when they're available and the cost isn't prohibitive, we certainly should try to buy those organically. Now Scott, that's a hot topic there. You're talking about pesticides. Mm -hmm. Now will washing my fruits and vegetables and peeling those reduce my exposure to these pesticides? That's a great question. You know for us that one in six Americans contracts a foodborne illness every year. And washing and peeling isn't gonna eliminate all of those exposures, but it certainly can help. Those tests are done when they rank those foods based on the way that we typically prepare those fruits and vegetables. So washing and peeling really isn't gonna eliminate a lot of pesticides, but what it will do, it's gonna eliminate my exposure to other pathogens like bacteria, microbes, and fungi. So before we wanna consume or prepare any fruit or vegetable, we wanna make sure that first we wash our hands with soap and water, and then we wash that produce item under running water. And when it's a hard shelled item, like a melon, a pineapple, or some squash, we can take a vegetable brush because those pathogens reside on the outside. And if you don't wash it, that knife, when you slice into it, is gonna push those pathogens inside. So now, later on that day or the next day, you may have some stomach discomfort. You may be thinking that 
you have the flu or you're getting some other type of infection, it could just be you didn't wash your fruit or vegetable, push that knife through and you got some other type of exposure creating a foodborne illness. Well, thanks for that information. Now, switching gears a little bit, let's talk a little bit about this uh, new food chart that we've seen. When we grew up, we saw the food pyramid and we memorized that, we got a good feel for that one. And now we see that there's a new chart that's out. It looks more like a plate, yet it talks about the importance of eating fruits and vegetables still. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure, absolutely. The, the food pyramid hasn't gone away, but what the current administration did was they realized that that food pyramid just really didn't get the message out as well as they wanted to. So now, choosemyplate.gov has been created and there's some great tools there to help you manage your weight, make better choices at the grocery store, and get more nutrition from the foods that you're gonna eat on a regular basis. And it all starts with, what should my plate look like? So there's a graphic that shows half your plate, no matter what meal it is during the day, should be fruits and vegetables. And so if we can all try to emulate that, we're gonna be on our way to living a healthier lifestyle. Additionally, at both the USDA Food Pyramid website and the choosemyplate.gov website, there are other tools that can help the public make great choices and manage their weight, whether it's understanding portion control or learning the differences between fats. So if you go there and search through the many tools that they have, I think you're going to find that there's something for everybody. And you don't just have to go to the government websites. There are other websites out there as well, like sparkpeople.com, livestrong.com, and mayoclinic.com. And although they're all unique in their own way, they have one thing in common, and that's there are tools there that are going to benefit you in managing your weight, understanding your food, and living a healthier lifestyle. So I would encourage everyone that's watching this program to look at those sites and see if one of them kind of fits what they're looking for and then utilize the tools on, their web, on that website to help them lead a healthier lifestyle. Scott, this is great information on this side. Let's go over to the meat department and talk more. Okay. So here we are at the meat department, Forest, and we know that there's a lot of different choices that you can make at the meat department. And most families include ground beef in at least one or two meals throughout the week. So let's talk about the different choices that we have in ground, in ground beef. And here, what we want to focus on is what's the fat percentage? So you can see that there are different percentages of leanness to the ground beef. We've got 90% lean here, and then we can move down here and we'll have 80% lean. And so what does that mean? Basically it's saying that there's going to be more fat, more saturated fat, in the 80% lean ground beef. And that's important to note because saturated fat can raise blood cholesterol levels and increase your risk for coronary artery disease. So when possible, we'd like to avoid those items that have a greater amount of saturated fat. But there's a lot of ground meat products in your meat department and it's just not about ground beef. We also have ground chicken, ground pork, and ground turkey. So regardless, of what the ground meat product is, we always want to make sure that we look at the label or the package and see how lean it is. This is 99% lean, and they also have a 93% lean product. Okay, so, so those are a couple things that we can do. Okay, Scott, what about chicken? That's a great question for us. We know that chicken can be a great choice. Mm -hmm. It's a lean form of protein, and very often you're going to find it on sale. But Sometimes the packaging can be confusing because we can look at a product and say chicken breast tenderloins and we're thinking that this is a good value. But in fact, a lot of companies will add chicken broth, water, and sodium to their product. That increases weight and you actually wind up getting less chicken in these packages. So it's important that you look at the label, find out how much water or broth has been added, and then compare it against some of the other products. And you can see here, we have a product that has less than 1% added water as compared to the previous product where they added 15% water weight. So you're getting a much better value with these products here that don't have the added water or broth weight. So it's important that people watching this show take a moment, read the packages, and understand exactly what it is that they're buying. Okay, Scott, we talk a lot about our food choices, but what about what we're drinking with our meals? That's a great point, Forrest. 
ChooseMyPlate.gov, one thing that you'll notice on that if you go to that website and look at that is they've included dairy or milk with every meal. And that's an important consideration, particularly as we age, because we want to make sure that we're getting adequate calcium. And although we can get plenty of calcium if we're choosing the right fruits and vegetables, dairy is an easy way for us to add calcium to our meals. So having a glass of milk or a couple glasses of milk throughout the day can certainly help that. We just want to make sure that we're avoiding sugary drinks and replacing them with water. And although a lot of people will say, well, drinking water throughout the day is just really mundane, here's what I'll say. Add some lemon, lime, or even a cucumber slice to your water, and it's really refreshing. And people might use, be able to use that to avoid those sugary drinks. And lastly, when we talk about bottled water, because we're all looking at convenience, one thing I'll say is, you know, you're spending a lot of money on bottled water and when we're trying to make our food dollars stretch every day maybe that's not the best choice for us you know that bottled water in a lot of instances is nothing more than tap water and the bottled water industry really isn't regulated your municipal water that you get out of your tap not only regulated and tested regularly but those results are posted on their website so you'll know exactly what's in your water whereas those contamination studies that the water companies do for bottled water they don't have to post those. So you really don't know what you're getting in bottled water. So I would say choose tap water over bottled water. And if you want to learn more about that particular issue, go to foodandwaterwatch.org. There's a great deal of information that can help you with that choice there as well. Scott, thank you very much for joining us. That's excellent information. We appreciate that. My pleasure, Forrest. If you want more information, go to mesaz.gov fire, where you can go on a 30 minute tour of the rest of the store with Scott. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Scott, let's go get some lunch. Sounds great, Ford.